Learning to learn more about differentiated instruction. My name is Renee Aziz and I'm a National Professional Development Trainer and CEO of Virtuoso Education Consulting. I'm glad that you're interested in learning more about how to use differentiated instruction to meet the needs of the students in your classroom. Differentiated instruction, or DI as it's often called, is a philosophy of teaching that creates a personalized and responsive classroom environment. It utilizes whole group, small group, and individualized instruction in order to support students in mastering standards-based curriculum. Differentiated instruction maximizes student growth and individual success by leveraging the unique qualities of each student, and it offers a variety of learning options within a student-centered classroom. Now, sometimes differentiated instruction is mistakenly compared to the practice of having students work in groups on different tasks. But D, D, DI, or differentiated instruction, is much more than that. It's not just about allowing students to work in groups. Many educators agree that a variety of teaching strategies or approaches are needed to meet the wide range of needs in a classroom. But this belief alone does not define what's meant by differentiated instruction. Rather, differentiated classrooms begin with a solid curriculum and engaging instruction. Differentiated instruction focuses on individual needs and growth and the implementation of a range of teaching strategies to meet those needs. Now with this in mind, I'd like to share with you five principles that you should really use to guide your implementation of differentiated instruction. First, in a differentiated classroom, Time, materials, instructional strategies, student groupings, and even assessments are tools that are flexibly used um, for instruction. All of these components should vary based on the needs of the students in your classroom. Secondly, ongoing assessments create an alignment between your instruction and what kids know. Using formative assessments will not only allow you to identify the specific skill strengths or weaknesses that you need to focus on, but it will also allow you to measure what you need to teach. It should guide your instructional focus. Thirdly, when implementing differentiated instruction, a variety of learning options are utilized. For example, whole class, small group, individual tasks are all used across the learning environment. And when placing students in small groups, you should ensure that these groups are mixed, they're heterogeneous, according to the readiness level, the interests, the learning profiles, or achievement levels of students in your classroom. Next, a, a differentiated classroom uh, really has lots of activities. Activities are designed so that all learners are able to complete tasks that are interesting, engaging, and provide equal access to the essential understandings of the skills that, as instructor, you are focusing on. And finally, at the heart of differentiated instruction is the philosophy that teachers and students collaborate together um, around classroom decision making. The teacher works to facilitate student learning and the student recognizes their preferred ways of learning that new content. Now with those five principles in mind, we can look at the research base to learn about essential components of using differentiated instruction in the classroom. Carol Tomlinson, a leading author in differentiated instruction, which I'm sure you've heard about, identifies four essential areas that teachers can modify to meet individual student readiness levels, preferences, and interests. Those four areas are content, process, products, and learning environment. The content refers to what students need to learn. The process is about the activities in which students engage in to make sense of or master the content that you're teaching. Products refers to the culminating product projects that you're asking students to apply or to extend um, to show what they have learned. And then finally, the learning environment is re really referring to the way in which the classroom works and feels. Now, 
again, there are numerous strategies that teachers can employ to differentiate across content areas. But I'll share with you a couple. Two very easy strategies that you can implement um, to differentiate your instruction are tic-tac-toe and cubing. To use the tic-tac-toe strategy, you should identify an assortment of activities that dis demonstrate mastery of the content that you're teaching. Then randomly distribute those activities on a three by three grid and allow students to complete those activities, any activities in any combination as long as they make a tic-tac-toe, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Um, to use the cubing strategy, you can create a six-sided figure or cube and make sure that you write a different activity on each side of the cube that addresses a concept from a variety of different perspectives. Students then have the opportunity to kind of roll the cube and complete the activity that they land on. Again, we've just given you a quick overview of the essentials of differentiated instruction. However, there's so much more to share about this topic. Please visit our website. It's www.virtuosoed.com. There you can find many resources and professional development opportunities to meet your needs around differentiated instruction. In the meantime, thanks for watching and we wish you much success in your quest to implement differentiated instruction in your classroom.